main problem with the NDC for some people is the personality of Rawlings. And I think also the military background or the, the coming into power through the Battle of the Gun and so on. And uh, eight of these senior officers, including yep. three former heads of state, yep. were executed. Yep. Had this not been done, I have no doubt in my mind that the officer corps would have ended up being eliminated. It's almost as if people's minds had already been tuned up as to what had to be done to satisfy them. When Flight Lieutenant Rawlings had his first coup in 1979, it was the junior officers revolting against the senior officers and what they saw as their mismanagement and corruption. We of the Forces Revolutionary Council, during our short stay in, our, in power, have demonstrated openly that the holding of office in government in this country had in almost all cases been used to plunder the wealth of the nation. Now, any kind of revolt or uprising comes with its own set of violence. People really wanted a real change. And not going back to the old system where you had politicians in power who naturally became corrupt and uh, mismanaged things. So they wanted somebody who could really then address the issues and kind of solve our problems. Somebody who would roll up his sleeves and really get the business done. So that's how Rawlings emerged then. And over the years became the dominant personality in our politics. Since 1992, we have had successful democratic elections. And I think that in that regard, Rawlings' legacy is that he set the foundation on which the rest of us today are building. Rawlings was still very popular and so on. But then his term of office ran out in 2000. And they had to pick his vice then, who was uh, vice president at Tamils, as the presidential candidate for the, the ruling party. in December. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Your country, the trailblazer in West Africa on democratization, is going through its electoral process. We can learn from the Ghanaian experience as uh, we are all in the same neighborhood. We are all in the same boat. What happens in Ghana affects all of us, positively as well as negatively. So we are indeed delighted that uh, we can 
come and have these uh, conversations with you, Mr. President. Right, sir. Professor Sawyer, you're not new to some of the painful situations we've been through in the past in West Africa. Prof, I am worried because we know that the 2004 election did not have the integrity that it, it, it needed. It has created a very unpleasant political atmosphere for all of us. Come and assess things for yourself. Because one little mistake, you know, in your assessment, in your report, could undermine the aspirations and the hopes of a population of 20 million Ghanaians. We've started, we just started. It's seven o'clock and we've started. So it's like, as you see, the people are in the queue. From the first table, you check their list, you bring your, present your card. And then if you satisfy that the person's name is in the checklist, we allow the person to go and vote. So that is all. We didn't want to maybe disenfranchise anybody. Box my friend. is very crucial. So most of the voters or the electorate were at the polling station around 3 a.m. and there was not, there were no policemen there at that time. So it created some confusion. But as of now, voting is going on smoothly. Then. I want people to look at my children and my children not to feel that being African is something to be ashamed of because Africa is always looked at as a basket case. And more importantly, I want the Western world to come and learn from what we have in Africa because I think that we have a lot of wonderful things here that are overlooked because we are considered to be poor and backward and unstable. And to show that as a community, we respect, we learn, we grow together. Don't sleep, sleep on duty. Wake up, my friend. Get up. Sir. The next station. Let's go. Whether it's true or false, and I appreciate that, you know, we should not be making false allegations. However, I'm saying that this is their tendency. Otherwise, how do some African heads have billions, millions of pounds in, in what you call it, foreign accounts, and you want to ask me for the evidence of their thieving? Yes. Yeah, God bless you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Nothing, you know, makes me sadder than when I can hear a nation like America, because having emerged as the 
Only in unipolar superpower. You are obliged to provide leadership, not at the expense of moral morality. When you undermine it, what you in effect end up doing is that you're setting in motion for, for other countries, for despots to grow, for despots in third world countries to kill with impunity because they don't have to bring people to justice anymore. We are coming back. We are coming back. Sorry. So what you in effect end up doing is that you are undermining the culture of democracy. You undermine the culture of democracy. Hello. We love you. Honest, we love you. We are coming to fight back. And you know something? If America's first taste of terrorism was on September 11th, I want to tell them, and they know it, and I've been saying it, we in Africa, we've had inflicted on us terrorist regimes for decades. Before the Cold War, during the Cold War, and we thought things would improve after the, the demise of the bi bipolar world. Instead, it's gotten worse. We thought that maybe we would now see the human face of capitalism. Do you know what Pope John Paul, the late, described it? The savagery of capitalism. Let's talk about this subject a little bit more. I'm sorry, am I making sense? Absolutely. I hope so. Well, from what we've heard from various points, things seem to be going quite well, except that some areas are late. But mind you, this is not the point in time when the ropes put the actions into motion. Did you come here? Yes, four o'clock. In the afternoon. Afternoon. No. Nice. Uh, morning time. Morning came time. Four o'clock in the yeah. morning. Ten hours. This long Nine. time. We came here around six. Yeah. 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 We don't have enough, enough police station, so, so we, like, we want to leave go house. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. should we go? See. Last four years we faced the same problem. So we thought our leaders over here can, I mean, see something and then correct that mistake. But nothing has gone on. We are still here this the same this year too. We are facing the same problem. All of us can take part in this election. We love our mother Ghana. So we want everybody to take part in this election. All the people in the queue have got to be, have got to vote. Look, there are no lights. And last time, that, that's what happened. They voted till about 10, 11. And the others are counting. Then they, they start seeing the trend. And before you are aware, the whole thing's been twisted. It's terrible. the queue till the last person who is in the queue finishes voting before the poll will close. That's why I asked the military to come. They will give them light, they will protect the, the queue and everybody will vote. A democracy is only as strong or as weak as the participants in the process choose to make it.
we count our votes at the polling station, then we give every party agent a copy of the signed result. After that, there's no counting anywhere. The next stage is just aggregation, putting the figures together to determine, you know, the winner. The pool has come to an end, so now they are bringing the final results, the, the, the declaration of results form, to the final collection center. Now, if I don't get the results, how do we declare? Come election time, we need about 11,000 officials to man the 21,000 polling stations. How can we vouch for their neutrality? We hardly cannot vouch for their neutrality. We try to recruit them very carefully. Of course, we cannot vouch for the integrity of everybody who works for us, that we have tried to build integrity into the system itself, that's the verifiability into the system. These fax machines are the machines that we are going to use to receive the results from all the regions. And this chest you see here is going to be filled by all party agents to come and be here with us. And as the results come and we receive it from here, we show it round to them for them to see before it is sent to the chairman for him to also see and append his signature that is released to the public. So that is basically what we are going to do in this room. Saboba, are we to receive results for Saboba? Saboba is in. Okay, there's even a third one here. You have to be strong to be in there, especially when you're waiting for election results and you don't know what your faith is, you know. You have to have that strength. Come on, move your body. Come on, you move first. Let me go and see you two first. There are too many people here from the NDC. Right? Hold on, hold on. Come on, doesn't want me to enter the room. Our candidate, Nanado, is in the lead. Uh, with close to 50%. That is a lie. He has no evidence of what he's saying. What is, what is that? Very unprofessional. And I'm saying it's a lie. The only person who can tell us that is the Electoral Commission. He can wish for over 50, but he cannot say he's moving towards it. That's wishful yeah, thinking. Yeah, Check the figures. We have a majority in Parliament. I just believe that, I mean, Komna and I, we're friends. It is the politics that makes it look like we are at each other's throat, but hey, we're friends, we're buddies. You know, you know, we're buddies. Figures talk. Figures don't lie. Yeah. So figures don't lie. And at the end of the day, people should be calm. Let the Electoral Commission announce the results. Nobody should panic.
Now, which, are, which resorts are standing? Um, we'll go, we'll go ours. In the house. Okay, why has Van Temer taken so long? Don't believe what you're seeing on television. There's no way MPP is winning. So don't believe that. They are choosing what they want to put on television. Uh, believe me. Information guarded by our agents puts Professor Mills, our presidential candidate, and the NDC in a comfortable lead and we are sure of a first round win without any difficulty at all. It is important to state, however, that there are attempts to manipulate the result in favor of the MPP. Which gives you the indication that you've won and that you are definitely on the path to victory. Can you just take us through the specifics? I'm not going to go into that now. Thank you very much. Do you have any fears that they might, something might, might be done to the results, they might be tempered around it? Madam, this is struggle for power. And people don't simply let power go. Where are those figures coming from? Thank that you very much. That Maybe you can stop it. NDC believes that uh, it has won the elections. Of course, the ruling New Patriotic Party has described the position taken by the opposition National Democratic Congress as irresponsible and the if you like a position that could possibly turn Ghana into the lies of Kenya, Zimbabwe, and all the bad examples that you can speak of as far as the elections are concerned on the African continent. Shamima. The NDC says we have won. The MPP says we have won. For the past five hours or so, it's been back and forth from the two leading political parties. Our evidence is right. We don't hear that. We're only trying to figure out what exactly we need to get across to the people that's out there. That's, that's, that's what we are doing. Yes, yes. Um, uh, we are here to, to obviously manage and calm uh, tensions, and we want the country to be stable. to win and um, it's so close now so that's what we're projecting now Says have won, so we don't know what is going on. Come out, the electoral commission, come out and tell us something. That's all. The December 7th presidential and parliamentary elections have so far been conducted in an open, transparent, and competitive environment. I would like, on behalf of all our mission members, to urge the political parties and the people of Ghana to remain calm over the next few days and allow enough space for the Electoral Commission in order to produce the final to produce the final results within reasonable time. We can help, we can give ideas, we can support processes, we can tell them where we think they're going wrong, but really the responsibility is for, for the authorities here. 
the Electoral Commission wishes to remind all Ghanaians that it is the only body in the country authorized by law to conduct public elections and declare their results. On the basis of percentages, it will not make the 50% plus one. Okay, Prof. Okay. Thank you very much. Because nobody can get a 50%, you know, we shouldn't waste our time. You can get 50%. You, you can get 50%. Where are you going to get it from? We are going to get 50 plus one. Come now. Don't let's waste, don't let's waste our time. Yeah, Cooks. Hello? Yeah, thanks. Commission, Dr. Kujo Afarijan.